as I was walking by, these guys were so very carefully uh, putting things on the bench there to sit on because it's wet. The guy on the left, he spent an, an inordinate amount of time and yet when he finally turned around and set his butt down, he missed it. <laughs> I thought that was funny. You may remember from the other video I showed you some benches that had paduk boards on them. This is, looks like a piece of art, but it is what we call in English Chinese chess. Um, I can't think of the Korean word right now. Have you ever played it? It's pretty cool. Anyway, I've tried to play Chinese chess. Um, I don't, I don't have friends really, so it's hard to find people who want to do things like that. But it seemed kind of fun. I, if I played it a lot, I bet I would get good at it. What we have here is a problem. Whatever's in there. Looks like it might be uh, a trackable. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, it is. A, no, I don't know what it is, but it looks like uh, rust. Water got in there. Yuck. The whole thing's wet. Here we have a geo coin of some kind. Water in there. I haven't opened the this yet. Maybe the log. Uh, looks like. Um, mildew has taken over in there. Geocaching.com pencil that is rotting I think. Alright well I do have some things um, that I, I can probably help this cache out a little bit by uh, drying it out and seeing what else I got in my backpack that might help. Yeah, what a mess. Um, I found a few geocaches. I don't know how many I found. But my Garmin, finally the battery died. So, I guess that's my, my cue. Go home. Alright, what I gotta do is I gotta... I'm out in a residential area and there is nothing around here. There is a really gaudy church though I just saw. Do you want to look at it? Let me see. We have an orange spire. Hmm. Well, it's colorful. Here's something popular today. That is probably, my guess is probably the sixth or seventh group of bicyclists I've seen go by kind of chilly today. It's probably, I would reckon, Fahrenheit, 35, 36, somewhere around that area. All right, well, I'm done geocaching. Garmin says so. I could use my iPhone, but I don't want to use up the battery on it. All right, this looks like how they laid the, the rails and tamped down the ties. These machines did that. Cool. So it seems that this um, James R. Morris was granted permission by the royal government to build a railroad from Seoul to a place called Chemulpo which looks like it's on the coast. I never heard of it, but Po is a reference. Po means it's a port. So, Chimu Po. So it went from the coast inland to Seoul. Oh, and this is, um, this is the document that allowed him to not only build the railroad, but to build the bridge across the Han River. Hmm. 
The first railroad in Korea. Built by an American. I'm not nationalist at all. It's interesting though to consider all the politics that was going on at that time. And uh, the Japanese were here, but they hadn't officially annexed Korea at that time. They officially annexed Korea in 1910, and James Morris was building his railroad in 1900. It's really interesting. Not Korea. Korea. Uh, apparently these were devices that they used to test whether you could be a train engineer or not. Coordination, testing coordination, sorting coins into a box, sorting shapes, tapping tester, aim tester, they should, they should use those in the bathrooms, threading tester, Card sorting tester. Hmm. The skills you need right there to be an engineer. I remember these. I used to buy a ticket and you had to put the ticket in there. And as you walk through, you could pick it up on the other side. They don't do that anymore. They have another system. Now this would be a great toy. I, I would, I would literally, I would literally spend hours playing with this if I had it. There's a hand car down there. I wonder if it works. It's tied down so it doesn't doesn't move. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, tour of the railroad museum. Thanks for watching everyone.